it's a fantastic honor to present the film here. This is my second time in Cannes, and my first uh, film, Footnote, was in the Cine Foundation selection, but that was 15 years ago, so it feels great to be back. I was actually um, reading an essay uh, a few years ago, um, and I checked the footnote of the essays, and it mentioned the publication of the book Michelle Remembers, and I stayed up until 4 a.m researching the subject and I immediately became obsessed with the idea and I could see the film unfolding in front of me immediately. When I woke up uh, the next day, I'd had a dream that someone else had already made the film and I had to Google it to check if it had actually happened and I was disappointed to find that it hadn't been made so I knew that I had to make it. I wanted to uh, research and observe all different kinds of representation of the phenomenon of this hysteria, the way that it had unfolded through the media and uh, through different types of media, through fiction, non-fiction. Um, and so the initial part was just collecting a huge resource of archive and I did a residency uh, for two months where I just watched 200 hours of archive and whittled that down to build the structure. I decided to focus on two aspects of the phenomenon of the mass hysteria. So the first aspect that I wanted to look at was the origins of this hysteria, uh, which many people attribute to the publication of the book Michelle Remembers. So I wanted to look at the testimonies uh, as they are recorded within the book Michelle Remembers, and then look at how the phenomenon uh, ended in the McMartin Preschool trial, one of the longest and most expensive trials in US history. These two cases were the kinds of bookend structure of the film. And it was, it was kind of by chance that I couldn't actually, uh, through sort of much research and searching, I couldn't find the initial tapes that were said to exist of Michelle's testimony. So I was in a position where I had uh, the transcripts of her therapy sessions and I decided to reconstruct them. And I decided to use the aspect of reconstruction to really uh, find a way to stylistically deal with the notion of false memory that experience where you uh, genuinely believe that you've had an experience that uh, didn't actually exist in reality. Um, so the idea of using hyper-real CG animation, for me, tied into the idea of false memory, where something is very, very familiar, it feels almost real, but then uh, there's something a little bit off about it. And I wanted to kind of use this as a stylistic device for this phenomenon. I started out with a lot of archival sound that I was finding uh, from many different sources. Um, but then uh, I soon realized that the sort of genre of this film was actually um, a documentary horror. Um, so I really kind of used uh, that as a guiding principle in order to kind of build fear, thinking about really kind of generic horror tropes, uh, and then sort of pairing that with something which is um, really kind of familiar, domestic and uh, banal and everyday, the sound of the news. So it was kind of like pairing those two genres together, fantasy and, and documentary. One of the questions that I had when I started researching the film was how a mass hysteria like this manifests. Um, and I wanted to understand uh, the kind of cause and how there could be this really collective belief in something that never actually occurred. And I found that uh, it was spread both by the therapists um, and also by this kind of media hype and the sensation. And it reflected upon the technology of the 80s. This was the introduction of the 24-hour news cycle and there was a need to fill the cable stations with a lot of news and frenzy. But it was also interesting to me that the psychologists genuinely believed this phenomenon. And it was a time where, you know, starting with the Freudian notion of recovering memories, a lot of the therapists learned about these techniques through uh, conferences. Uh, so they were as much a kind of part of it. And in some ways, it, it, it's not to doubt whether or not these women uh, and children genuinely had traumatic experiences. It's more that they were actually abused by a very system that was there to protect them, the system of mental health uh, advocates or professionals, sorry, uh, the media and law enforcement officials. Sins underground. This morning we are telling. 
telling the truth? Um, I blocked out a lot of the memories I had. What kinds of things went on in the family? Well, there would be rituals in which babies would be sacrificed. You know, group sex, animals, drinking of blood, eating of flesh, children, and all you that sort of thing. You witnessed the sacrifice, right? Um, when I was very young, I was forced to participate in that, in which I had to sacrifice an infant. And the, the purpose of sacrifice is to what? Is to bring you what? What are you sacrificing for? For power. Uh -huh. Power. What's your mother doing? I'm not exactly what her role is. I haven't, you know, recovered all of my memories.